This is the view from inside from our living room window and you can see why that all looks quite alarming. <laughs> it's quite a quantity of steam that comes out of the top there as it's doing the defrost. And the big plume comes out. There we go. That's what we were waiting for. Right, it's getting cold, so I'm going to show you what my defrost cycle looks like. The first time it happens to any heat pump owner, it may be a little bit disconcerting. And it may not be something you were quite expecting. The first time it happened to me, I was sat in our conservatory looking back at the house. I can't remember if I was having breakfast or another meal, but I was sat at the table and all of a sudden seeing steam everywhere. This first bit of footage I've sped up by 5000% so you can see the ice build up on the back of the unit. I set up the cameras and I was waiting so long that in the end I put the domestic hot water boost on to really crank the heat pump up so that it would frost up as quickly as possible and initiate the defrost cycle. Already you can see the lines appearing and you'll start to see that it goes from a solid white on the back of the heat exchanger which is on the left, the GoPro just snugly resting on the pipes at the back of the heat pump and a, a shot on the right of the front which doesn't really show a lot of the moment but it, once the steam starts going you'll see why the camera at the front is also important. Can you see those lines forming on the heat exchanger there? That's where the heat pump's gone into reverse. It's not gone into reverse with the circulation pump into the into the house, into the hot water uh, side of things but it's internally the refrigerant is running in reverse so it's instead of taking the energy from the outside air it's taking the energy from the hot water from the house in my case the buffer tank and it is putting uh, I should have looked up the specs on this anywhere between 15 30 sometimes up to 45 liters of hot water uh, that it will take to defrost this. How does the frost build up on there? Well it's a combination of the low temperatures and humidity that, that makes that happen but as you can see it's slowly melting it away as it's running in reverse. So this, this portion of the clip is now running in real time, sorry that I didn't note that a minute ago. The first bit I sped up to 5000% but then I wanted you to be able to witness in real time what it looks like on the back of the heat exchanger and that from the front at the moment you can't really see that much is going on. So it's slowly melting that off and you will start to see uh, drops of water start see that wave kind of go across the heat exchanger there down to the bottom corner and then you'll start to see now the water droplets are starting to form and you'll see that that starts to starts to drip down to the bottom of the heat exchanger now there's uh, many advantages to keeping this heat exchanger clear I've witnessed that sometimes with a bit of frost on the back of the unit, sometimes my unit has had a, a thin layer of frost on the back there for one or two hours and it still seems to be absorbing enough heat. But of course any layer of frost on there is going to make it more difficult for the heat pump to absorb the energy from the air surrounding the heat pump. Now a big shout out goes to Tom Bray who really inspired me to uh, try and take a little notice of my defrost cycle and try and record it a bit more. You can see actually the steam is starting to come off now if you look really carefully. Unfortunately my camera looking at the front of the heat pump is kind of blown out by the contrast of the sun coming to the front of the house but if you look to the left hand side you see the steam starting to form and this is the steam that's gently coming off the back of the heat exchanger before it engages the fan and it sucks through a big plume of steam that you'll see in a moment and once it clears this then that's when the heat pump can run at most run at its highest efficiency so although we may sacrifice a little bit of performance by running a defrost cycle we gain that back and more 
through having a nice clear heat exchange with no frost on the back where it can absorb the most energy from the surrounding environment. So let's give it a few more seconds. You're about to see the spectacular plume of steam that comes out. There you go. And it's really nice warm hot steam <laughs> that's coming out of there. Um, my my one of my sons particularly enjoyed that so I hope that little real-time recording helps you out and showed you what to expect there you go another quick rough and ready video from me to try and supply you with some content especially to those of you who are in the middle of your journey to getting a heat pump and helping you understand and uh, to set your expectations let me know what other things you wanted to see i've especially got a video in the pipeline about microbore pipe work um, there's a lot of questions about that i'll also be focusing a little bit on my buffer tank and some of the pros and cons of having a buffer tank and finally i'm going to be talking about the carbon footprint and how much this heat pump actually reduces our household emissions by see you next time